In 2014, Toyota unveiled its hydrogen-powered Mirai sedan. Powered by a fuel cell, it can run on hydrogen fuel with water as its only exhaust. They promised that this would revolutionize the automobile industry as an environmentally friendly option without the charging anxiety associated with electric vehicles. The Mirai has been a total flop, only selling 3-4 to 4 thousand units per year. This is a rounding error compared to the 10 million cars Toyota produces annually, and they're almost certainly losing money on it. Yet 10 years later, Toyota is still selling these cars and continues to insist that they'll play a part in decarbonizing the automobile industry. Despite the poor performance of the Mirai, another Japanese automaker, Honda, is planning to release a hydrogen SUV by the end of 2024. In 2018, the South Korean auto giant Hyundai unveiled its Nexo hydrogen-powered SUV. This has also been a money-losing flop. In January of 2024, Hyundai sold a grand total of two Nexos in the domestic market. In February, not a single Nexo was sold in the entire country. So why have hydrogen vehicles been such a flop? And why are Toyota, Honda, and Hyundai continuing to invest billions of dollars into this technology which has thus far failed to generate meaningful revenue? Hydrogen fuel cells take pure hydrogen and combine it with oxygen from the air. The hydrogen and oxygen combine to make water and electricity is released in the process. This electricity is used to power the car. Hydrogen cars have a few theoretical benefits over both internal combustion engine and battery electric vehicles. Because the only exhaust is water, it creates zero emissions when it drives. While electric vehicles can take up to an hour to charge, a hydrogen car can be refueled in just 5 minutes. The main downside of hydrogen is the high cost. Hydrogen is the smallest element in the periodic table, and in a compressed form it is highly flammable. Specialized infrastructure is required to transport it safely. Because of this, each hydrogen refueling station costs about $2 million to build. Hydrogen can be made from natural gas and coal. This is the cheapest way to create hydrogen, but it also emits carbon dioxide. Hydrogen created from fossil fuels is called gray hydrogen. Due to low energy efficiency, running a fuel cell vehicle on gray hydrogen typically generates more greenhouse gas emissions per mile than an internal combustion engine car. Gray hydrogen is the cheapest form of hydrogen to produce, but even still is far more expensive than gasoline. So it's more expensive and worse for the environment. The other option is to create so-called green hydrogen from renewable energy sources. If you use green hydrogen, a fuel cell vehicle can indeed be emission free. But at the moment, green hydrogen is prohibitively expensive. Finally, there's something called blue hydrogen. This is gray hydrogen with carbon capture to reduce emissions. However, due to inefficiencies in the carbon capture process, this method often creates more emissions than burning fossil fuels. Of the small number of hydrogen vehicles sold over the past decade, the majority of them run on gray hydrogen and are probably a net negative for climate change. So why do companies like Toyota seem so intent on making them? In 2014, the Japanese government created a strategic roadmap for hydrogen and fuel cells. In 2017, this was expanded into the National Hydrogen Strategy. They proclaimed that Japan is in a good position to take on the challenge of bringing about innovation ahead of other countries and should lead the globe in hydrogen use. They aim to make a hydrogen society where hydrogen is used to power every sector of the economy. The Japanese government thought that they were in a good position to lead the world in fuel cells because companies like Toyota have been researching this technology since the 1990s. It makes sense that Japan would want to invest in hydrogen as an alternative to fossil fuels. The country has almost no deposits of oil or natural gas. This puts the Japanese economy at the mercy of volatile international prices. They created development targets for the hydrogen industry through 2030. As of 2016, there were only 100 hydrogen fueling stations in the country and 2,000 hydrogen cars on the road. By 2030, they wanted there to be 900 fueling stations and 800,000 hydrogen cars. They also wanted to expand the use of hydrogen residential heating systems. The main brand of hydrogen boilers is called Any Farm and can be fitted into residential homes. As of 2016, there are 22,000 Any Farms installed across the country. By 2030, they wanted to increase to 5.3 million households. This would replace natural gas powered boilers. The linchpin to support all of this was to decrease the price of hydrogen. In 2016, the average price of hydrogen was 100 yen per cubic meter. For reference, natural gas costs 16 yen for an equivalent heating value. Thus, hydrogen costs more than 6 times the cost of natural gas. They wanted to reduce the cost to 30 yen by 2030. This would still be almost double the price of natural gas. Hydrogen prices are often measured in dollars per kilogram instead. 30 yen per cubic meter is equivalent to about 2.8 US dollars per kilogram. To achieve these goals, the government invested roughly 50 billion yen per year in subsidies every year, from 2016 through 2021. 
This is equivalent to about 500 million US dollars per year, or more than 4 billion dollars cumulatively. The majority of the subsidies supported the production of fuel cells, fuel cell vehicles, and hydrogen fueling infrastructure. Toyota created the Mirai hydrogen car in an attempt to take advantage of these subsidies. Unfortunately, it hasn't worked out. As of 2023, there were only 160 fueling stations across Japan. With such a small number of refueling stations, very few people wanted to buy hydrogen cars. As of 2023, there are less than 8,000 hydrogen vehicles on the roads across the entire country. The Anifarm hydrogen boilers have also been a disappointment. As of 2021, there are 400,000 Anifarms installed across the country. This represents less than 1% of Japanese households. The main reason for the lackluster hydrogen adoption is the high cost. Prices have not come down nearly as quickly as the government expected. Currently, the retail price of hydrogen in Japan is $10 per kilogram. This is three times the government's 2030 target. At this price, it is still much cheaper to run a car with gasoline and to heat your home with natural gas. In 2023, a Japanese taxi company called MK West Japan Group bought two Toyota Mirais as an experiment. The CEO told Bloomberg that it cost $6,500 per year more to operate the Mirai compared to an equivalent hybrid electric car. This is even after government subsidies. He says the cost of fuel needs to be cut in half before he considers buying more hydrogen cars. Currently, almost all hydrogen in Japan is grey hydrogen that is imported from abroad, so they are not achieving their goal of reducing dependence on imports. If we look at sales of the Toyota Mirai, they've sold between 2 and 6,000 units per year, including exports. This is a drop in the bucket compared to the 10 million cars that Toyota sells annually. It's hard to believe that Toyota could be generating enough contribution profit on the Mirai to cover its fixed production costs, let alone the research and development. This project has almost certainly been a money loser. Despite the lackluster results to date, Japan is doubling down on its hydrogen strategy. They recently announced another $20 billion of subsidies. This will be paid to companies that produce green hydrogen from renewable energy sources. Green hydrogen is more expensive to produce than grey hydrogen, which is already more expensive than gasoline. While the details of the subsidies have yet to be revealed, it's hard to imagine that $20 billion will be enough to catalyze widespread adoption of hydrogen vehicles. For its part, Toyota will release a new hydrogen vehicle called the Crown later this year to be sold exclusively in the domestic market. Perhaps they're hoping that the government's recently announced subsidies will allow the Crown to be more successful than the Mirai. Now let's turn our attention to South Korea. Similar to Japan, the Korean government decided to focus on hydrogen to reduce their reliance on imported fossil fuels. In 2018, they released their National Hydrogen Roadmap. This was a plan to pump billions of dollars of subsidies to develop the hydrogen industry. That same year, Hyundai released the Nexo hydrogen-powered SUV. Currently, Nexo makes up almost all hydrogen vehicle sales in the country. Korean government documents explain that if 10% of the $2 trillion global automobile market converts to hydrogen, that would represent a $200 billion opportunity. If South Korea can dominate the hydrogen vehicle market, this could add 2.5% to the country's GDP and create 420,000 new jobs. The first part of this plan is to provide government funding to build out hydrogen infrastructure within Korea itself. In 2018, there were only 14 fueling stations. They target increasing this to 86 by 2019, 310 by 2022, and 1,200 by 2040. The next part of the plan is to increase the sales of hydrogen vehicles. In 2018, South Korea only produced 712 hydrogen cars. As hydrogen fueling stations got built out, the expectation was for Hyundai Nexo sales to explode. The target was for the country to produce 81,000 units by 2022 and 100,000 units by 2025. By 2040, they hope to have cumulatively sold 6.2 million hydrogen cars. About half of them would be sold domestically, with the remainder being exported abroad. Thus far, Korea's hydrogen roadmap has been a major disappointment. The government statistics office publishes data for vehicle production every month. The number of hydrogen vehicles sold in Korea is minuscule and declining. Sales peaked at 1,300 units in April of 2022. In 2023, sales volumes collapsed. In January of 2024, two hydrogen cars were sold. In February of 2024, a grand total of zero hydrogen cars were sold. That's a pretty incredible statistic. South Korea is a country with 50 million people and has automobile sales in excess of 1.5 million per year. Yet, despite spending billions of dollars on government subsidies, not a single person in the entire country bought a hydrogen car in the month of February. The Hyundai Nexo represents substantially all hydrogen car sales in Korea. 
It is estimated that each Nexo costs Hyundai the equivalent of $75,000 to make, but they sell them for $51,000. The central government provides subsidies to the buyers, bringing the cost down to $42,000. Some city governments provide even more subsidies, bringing the price all the way down to $35,000. This brings it in line with some internal combustion engine vehicles. But to be an attractive option for consumers, the hydrogen fuel needs to be cheap enough. The main hydrogen fueling company is called Hynet and is partially funded by the government. In the summer of 2023, Hynet raised the price from about $7 per kilogram to $10.33 per kilogram. The Hyundai Nexo can drive about 57 miles on one kilogram of hydrogen so now it costs about 18 cents per mile driven. Similarly sized gasoline powered SUVs cost about 14 cents per mile in Korea. Battery electric vehicles are significantly cheaper even than that. Hydrogen infrastructure is much less developed than gasoline infrastructure. With a limited number of suppliers, prices are subject to extreme volatility. In November, three quarters of hydrogen filling stations in South Korea closed after some equipment at hydrogen production facilities broke down. This was a major disaster, leaving many drivers stranded and their cars having to be towed. Due to the high cost and unreliable fueling infrastructure, very few consumers are willing to take the risk of sinking $35,000 into an EXO. This creates something of a catch-22. There are not enough refueling stations for people to feel comfortable buying a hydrogen car. Because there are so few hydrogen cars on the road, private companies cannot justify the massive investment of building new fueling stations. Each fueling station costs about $2 million to build. The only way to solve this problem is for the government to finance the fueling stations, but this would likely require tens if not hundreds of billions of dollars of taxpayer money, with no guarantee of any financial return. So domestic Korean sales haven't been good, but what about exports? The Nexo is indeed exported abroad. The majority of exports go to California, which is the only state in the US with any hydrogen fueling stations to speak of. Hyundai also sells a handful of Nexos in Japan and Europe, but this is too small to matter. In 2013, the California state government allocated $120 million to subsidize hydrogen fueling stations. To date, they've built about 60 of them, mostly centered around Los Angeles and San Francisco. Hydrogen vehicle drivers face similar problems in California that they face in South Korea. The cost of hydrogen is higher than gasoline, despite California having some of the highest gas prices in the country. The few hydrogen stations that exist suffer frequent outages. In February of this year, Shell closed its three hydrogen stations and canceled its previously announced plans to build 48 new stations in the state. Despite being eligible to receive $40 million in subsidies, the stations wouldn't be commercially viable given the paltry number of hydrogen cars on the road. According to government statistics, 3,143 hydrogen vehicles were sold in California in 2023. I'm not sure how many of them were Toyotas and how many were Hyundais, but the total number is so tiny that it hardly matters. While hydrogen vehicles have languished, electric vehicle sales are continuing to grow. In 2023, 13.6 million battery electric vehicles were sold worldwide. 900 EVs were sold for each hydrogen car. Charging stations are far cheaper to build than hydrogen fueling stations, and electricity is an order of magnitude cheaper than hydrogen. The only conceivable benefit of faster refueling times is moo because of the lack of fueling stations. For perspective, there are 160,000 gas stations in the US, to create that many hydrogen stations would cost about $300 billion. You would likely need hundreds of billions more to build the hydrogen production facilities to supply them. It's just way too much money. South Korea has a very high population density, so on paper it should be one of the best places to do this. Yet despite the government investing billions of dollars in subsidies, their hydrogen economy has been an expensive flop. The idea that 10% of global car sales will shift to hydrogen and create 420,000 jobs is a fantasy that's never going to happen. Toyota and Hyundai have taken cues from their respective governments and expended significant resources to develop hydrogen cars, but thus far, all they've accomplished is wasting billions of dollars for taxpayers and shareholders alike. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this video. What do you think about hydrogen cars? Will they ever be viable? Let us know in the comments section below. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Wall Street Millennial, signing out.